untouched stretches of the Sahara lie the bones of creatures no human has ever seen. Searching where few have ventured, a team of fossil hunters sifts the desert for clues to an ancient mystery. With time running out, they track a bizarre killer a hundred million years old, even as it stalks their imagination. of southern Morocco, an expedition crosses the edge of the Sahara and a frontier of science. Paul Serino, a paleontologist at the University of Chicago, leads a joint team of American and Moroccan fossil hunters. It's the first big expedition into this part of the desert. Here, Serino hopes to find new beasts to prove an old theory that when Africa drifted free of the other continents, its dinosaurs went their own way. The team has been searching for five weeks, yet no dinosaur has turned up. Their base camp is Taos, a tiny outpost on the Algerian border. Year round, it's inhabited by Berbers, occasionally by Tuaregs, the true nomads of the desert. For two months, the fossil hunters will live like the Tuaregs, crisscrossing the Sahara in the wake of strange beasts found nowhere else on Earth. Creatures older than time. The Sahara is the world's largest desert and one of the hottest places on Earth. Temperatures soar to 130 degrees. One-fifth of it is sand. Four-fifths is rock. Most of it is barren. The Sahara has the highest evaporation rate in the world. When the sun is highest and the humidity lowest, life shrinks from the heat. There are few roads in the Sahara, and the fossil trail is faint. It begins in the twilight before the First World War. In 1914, German paleontologists digging in Egypt found bones of a strange new meat eater with a huge fin on its back. In World War II, this sole specimen was bombed out of existence. Ten years later, across the desert in Morocco, a French paleontologist turned up fragments of another new creature. Yet from this part of the Sahara, no complete skeleton has ever emerged. In 1990, in yet another part of the desert, Paul Serino stumbled upon two new species of dinosaurs. Seized by Africa fever, he picks up the dinosaur trail in Morocco. There's such a lore about this part of the Sahara with the early finds. I thought that bone might be more plentiful. It would be easier to find fossils than it actually was. And uh, after about two weeks of being in the desert, we understood the odds we were against, which was that it was going to be quite difficult to actually walk out of here with uh, some new dinosaurs. On this limestone cliff, the first hardship is simply walking at all. You're talking hiking hundreds of feet each day, 110, 115 degree temperature. And it's that kind of faith and belief that carried people. They're walking in limestone all day. You sort of rip your, rip your feet up, just blisters, um, sore feet, that sort of thing. It's incredible how hot it really gets. And, and you go through a tremendous amount of water each day. The worst has been the, the sandstorm, windstorm that blow in. After night, they return to camp, footsore and empty-handed. 
They have found hints of a dozen new dinosaurs, but no dinosaur itself. Following a faint trail, Sereno is guided by beasts that haven't stirred for a hundred million years. The days grow longer, but time runs short. For 40 days and nights, they comb the desert. Then, on the 41st day, they close in. Well, in the morning, it started out on a wrong foot. Literally, uh, one of my boots had been plunged into water. And so we opened up the truck, and it was time to go prospecting. And I decided to prospect in one boot and one sandal and had spent the day with a little bit of trepidation on every rock. It came time to go back for lunch. And I said to Jeff, I said, oh, I'll meet you at the truck, so I'm going to go the long way around. It's easier to get down. Gabrielle, uh, all of a sudden, uh, didn't come back for lunch on time. And we got very worried. On the way, I stumbled over uh, an incredible find. <laughs> at the time, I didn't, I didn't know it. And uh, we went running out to find, uh, find her after uh, almost an hour had passed. I saw one bone, I saw another bone, and I was trying to get them, and I knew I was going to be late for lunch. And we eventually did find her. She came down with these strange bones. And they were running around calling my name, going, Gabe, and I'm like, I'm fine, I'm, I'm OK. Jeff, I don't to make a mistake. After a dormant eternity, a dinosaur had reemerged. What it was, the team didn't yet know. Perhaps a single animal or several. Perhaps intact or incomplete. It might be the same bizarre beast that turned up once before in the Sahara, then vanished. Or it might be something entirely new. The fossil hunters have uncovered a carnivore and a mystery. It takes five days in all to prize free each delicate bone. The team then wraps the fossils in foil, tucking it into every cranny so no fragments are jarred loose. Next, they wrap strips of burlap dipped in plaster around the bones. Once hard, it will form a jacket to protect them on the long journey to the lab. Ready? One, two. Already, they have a rare find. The bones are arranged just as they were when the beast died. What kind of beast it was, no one knew, until Paul Sereno began to put it together. It was midnight of that long, long day that I went into the uh, shelter that we had uh, the bones stored in, and I picked up the first fragment and put it right into place on one of the other pieces. Uh, as the hours passed, my eyes were just, really, I, I was, I just couldn't believe what was being assembled in front of me. Four in the morning, Paul came over to my cot and was like, Gabe, Gabe. As tears in my eyes, I said, y you don't know what we've discovered. I discovered something absolutely incredible. Hi, You're never gonna believe it. What we were seeing was a map of a single skeleton, a very strange one. I had a very important announcement to the crew, I assembled them all. I started telling them that they were the greatest crew because they'd put up with uh, an incredible uh, season and not a single one of them was down. And I said, you, you know, and I started crying in front of them and I said, you, you will not believe what we have begun to discover here. Uh, come and see. Right, okay. Before I left that room at 4 a.m., uh, I had the, the bones all organized anatomically, shoulder girdle, pelvic girdle, limbs, and so on. I mixed them all up. And I wanted to give them the opportunity to, to put it together. And I, I, I said, you won't believe what we have discovered. It, it's in there. It's incredible. And if you want to piece together the pieces yourself. And they said, no, show us. You know, we went running in and put the pieces back in order. In the field, the team thought they had dug up another spinosaur, the sail-backed oddity unearthed in Egypt. But the bones didn't fit. They moved one bone and realized they were looking at a shoulder blade. Into its socket fit a very small arm bone. They deduced that their new carnivore was fast-legged and short-armed, like its larger cousin, T-Rex. Still, its nearest relative was very distant. 
They had found a dinosaur found nowhere else on Earth. Cause for celebration. with the sun around 5 a.m. They'll work until sundown, except for a reprieve at noon when the sun burns brightest. After a day on the jagged limestone ridge, they start each morning with an obligatory ritual, boot mending. Most of the team has resorted to gluing strips of truck tire to their soles. I think this is the last time I ever go on an expedition with only one pair of boots. Each day, the team uncovers more pieces of Africa's ancient puzzle and another mystery. The biggest animals that we get here. The big Huge the teeth, four to five inches long from a giant carnivore. Yeah. Yet no other traces of it have turned up. What has turned up are traces of other humans, fossil poachers. Hans Larsen and Paul McGuinne discover that someone has dug here before them. Typical. Every day it's like we, we walk for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, and just come to stuff like this. Yeah, these are, these are caves dug by uh, illegal fossil hunters in the area. And if you look down the, the length of the hill, they're everywhere. Some of these are really deep too, like, like this one here is almost 12 feet deep. The channel and dig out whatever they can. Yeah, I mean, it's a pity because, I mean, they're only getting small, small little things and unfortunately it's illegal. So, so look at these tools that they're using, just pretty rough pickaxes. This looks pretty good. Spades. I mean, just, they just dig, dig in under these, well, under the sediment good. here. In Morocco, it's legal to sell common fossils, but not dinosaurs. Such treasures often end up abroad in the hands of private collectors beyond the reach of science. This day ends as it began with another ritual and a vital one, fetching water. The nearest well is four miles away. Berber women make the same journey on foot. Every few days, the team refills its water cans, 75 gallons worth. Each member drinks more than two gallons a day. Showers are only an occasional luxury, taken on the spot and consisting of an upended bucket. After seven weeks, the team has found only the tip of an iceberg, the huge teeth of a flesh-eating dinosaur. Paul Serino sets out to find the dinosaur itself. We still had uh, a couple days left in the field. We moved to one of the last areas we had to look. This time I was the lucky one, and it was totally unpredictable. I saw an area of outcrop. I walked towards it, and I walked over, and I saw in front of me a pile of bones, fragments. I picked this thing up, looked at the upside down side, and my eyes popped out of my head. Here we had the back end of a theropod skull, beautifully preserved flesh-eating carnivorous dinosaur. Of course, all these fingers crossed, I mean, maybe this was part of something else that was just above somewhere, but it was quite sheer. And I missed it the first time. And I circled around again, and that's when I saw, I looked up, and I saw on a pillar of rock the rest of the, the brain case and the skull going into the side of this cliff. And it was a sheer cliff, and it was sort of like a little statue sitting up there. And my, again, this was too much, I mean. <laughs> Wow, oh, this cheekbone is really huge. Wow, the preservation is, is magnificent. Look at this. We had been tracking it earlier in the season, yeah. and we often joked about finding it. And we joked, there is some whopping big animal, you know, carnivore, uh, in this formation. And so we've tracked that thing for uh, 100 miles before we finally found it. So this would be the nose area here? Yeah. Yeah. That's right, this is the left. So it's been put over there. So here's the other nostril right here. Yeah. I'm digging in the nose right now. 
but at about 45 degrees. That should be great. Make sure that it holds a little. Mm. Look at this. Have you guys seen the teeth? This is incredible. One, two, three. There's a replacing tooth here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We got the whole jaw. Five, six, eight, ten. I mean, it wouldn't have really had more than 14 teeth. Mm -hmm. And here's some more Each one. alveoli. Yeah. This would have been one mean creature. Jaws. I don't want to worry about other bones sticking out from under. You just gave the whole skull. We've got cheek, nose bones, side bones there, orbit bones, and brain case back there. We've got the whole skull. The skull was huge, five feet long. It's not just the largest predator any of them have found. It's the most complete skull of a dinosaur ever found in Africa. The jaws were narrow and studded with blade-like teeth. Judging from marks on the teeth, the beast crunched through bone, making it the greatest predator of its day. If I ever imagined myself alive with one of the creatures that we're excavating, I always imagine myself hiding, but I'd, I'd give an arm to see the thing alive. It would be absolutely fantastic, um, even if that arm was taken by the dinosaur. <laughs> As always, before moving their find, the team cushions it in tin foil and plaster. Water, burlap, and plaster must all be lugged 500 feet up the cliff. The ordeal will take three days. Okay, we still haven't got a solid. By the fourth day, the plaster is dry. Okay, see where it's coming. Okay. See if you right. can slide it. On the count of three. One, One two, two, three. three. Oh. Yeah, okay. I got it. One, two, easy go. Okay, slide, slide the bottom. Pull your sides up. There we go. Okay, very good. Woo! Got it. Now begins the journey down the cliff with their precious prize. around the skull and the plaster around the rock, their big find now weighs 300 pounds. Along the cliffside, limestone rubble makes the going unpredictable, but the team is unflappable. You can't imagine a better team, a team that sticks together, has fun, works incredibly hard with shredded boots, patched pants. They're ready to, to go the extra uh, 10 miles uh, in the heat, and, I, and I'm really thrilled to be uh, a part of it. Well, we'll, we'll drop it right in front of the truck, okay. right? Ready? One, two, three. You gotta give it a little bit of height. Okay, you got the handle. Yep. The team heads back to camp with its second new dinosaur. It could take a year to clean the bones. Till then, we can only guess how this beast looked. We know it was a meat eater. It had a huge skull, five inch teeth, and three clawed arms. Perhaps 50 feet long, it was almost as big as the notorious T Rex, yet it was a creature apart. The dinosaurs found in Morocco suggest that in the course of evolution, Africa blazed its own trail. In this isolated hothouse thrived species found nowhere else. Yet ultimately, they went the way of all such creatures. Leaving the field behind, the team returns to base camp in Taos. After two months in the desert, they relish the comforts of home. Before I get back to the States, mm. at the first opportunity is a properly cold Really, really good beer. 
a very fresh champagne. Glasses and glasses of beer mixed with wine and beer and wine and beer and wine. Chocolate milkshake with whipped cream. The team has collected thousands of specimens, including more than 50 species of prehistoric fish, turtles, and crocodiles, and two new dinosaurs. In Chicago, the bones will be copied, studied, and finally returned to Morocco. Actually, it looks like it's best to go all the way to Uzina. Leaving the Sahara, Paul Serino and his team end one journey and start another back in time to map the uncharted past of ancient Africa. It's terribly thrilling to pull off these adventures in Africa. When you meet the challenge with a young group like this and succeed, it's one of those rare moments in life, and life is short. I never expected to be so dramatic, so hard, so difficult, and so rewarding. And uh, I, I couldn't ask for anything more. We're going to be back, I hope, next year, uh, trying to do it again. And uh, I think we all leave feeling that it's one of the greatest moments of our lives.